in today's show. We're looking ahead to Thursday's action in the NBA. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. Indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter, as always, at RedRock underscore Beeble and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Today's episode is brought to you by Rock Auto. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Visit RockAuto.com and tell them that Locked On sent you. Thank you. Thank you for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free. And we are available on all platforms. One day, this is the last day before the All-Star break. So we're going to look ahead to what we're watching for on that Thursday. Let's get it on, Gilly. <laughs> First game is the Heat and the Hornets. Omar Yetzevin, he's got an opportunity again because there is no Dwayne Dedman, there is no Markeith Morris, there is no Tyler Hero. So we're going to get Yetzevin back as the backup. And he played really well. In that game against the Mavericks, I wouldn't look at him as a massive 12-team league option, but deeper formats, yeah, you can stream him in for this game. And then with Hero out, we've got Gabe Vincent, who's going to play pretty solid minutes. He's been 28, 31, 24, and 29 the last four games. There's at least some stream value there in Vincent. Now, his value is capped a bit because Kyle Lowry is there, but there are more minutes for him coming off the bench now with Hero absent. And for the Hornets, I just want to know what the hell's going on. We know that Gordon Hayward will be out. Cody Martin will be out. Jalen McDaniels will be out. So are they going to go big again? Are they going to play Montrez Harrell and Mason Plumlee together again? They played a lot yeah, last game. With PJ Washington starting at the four and Kelly Oubre marginalized. I don't know that they'll go that big again. And they could push Oubre back to 30 plus. But Oubre's last two games have been 20 and 23 minutes. Like shit stuff. And Plumlee and Harrell are sharing the court. They shared the court a lot in yesterday's game. So is this the future of basketball? Two bad centers playing next to each other? I don't know. It's not, but is this the future of Hornets basketball for the time being? This is a very, very interesting development and something that we need to pay attention to. The Wizards and the Nets is the next game. This is a back-to-back for Washington. We'll get more of an idea on Wednesday, but what the hell happens with Hull Neto and Ish Smith? Is Neto just going to clamp onto 29 minutes and Smith gets whatever's behind that? Do they start playing together a little bit more? Does Kispert and KCP and Avdia cut into the playing time of those point guards? Because, you know, maybe KCP can theoretically handle the ball for a minute and Avdia can run point a little bit. How do they run that rotation? And then the question is, what happens at center? On Wednesday, Porzingis, Hachimura, and Gafford are all out. That does not mean that they'll be out on Thursday. Does Porzingis make a surprise return? Does Bryant play? It's a back-to-back. He's coming off an ACL. He hasn't played a back-to-back. He's only, they've only had one and he missed it with a ankle injury. Yeah, so will he play in this in this back-to-back? Will they have to push Gafford into a role? Will Porzingis be there? There are a lot of questions about what on earth happens at the center position. Or is it just going to be Anthony Gill playing 35 minutes if Bryant, Gafford, Porzingis are all out? Which is, again, a possibility. Do they start Kuzma at center? There are so many things that can happen here. Isaiah Todd would have to play. We have no resolution on what the center position is going to look like, in particular for Thursday, where it appears that Bryant might sit out. He might not but he might sit out due to that ACL recovery. On the Brooklyn side of things, no Kyrie, of course. I'll talk more about the Kyrie vaccine stuff later in the recap show. We'll get into that a little bit more. No Ben Simmons, no Kevin Durant, no Joe Harris. So we're going to get a similar rotation. It's a back-to-back for them. Um, Bruce Brown and Cam Thomas, they're the real interesting... We always want to watch the center rotation. Drummond, Aldridge, Griffin, Claxton. How do they manipulate those four guys? It was Griffin and Claxton that missed out last time. I don't know what it'll be this time. But what about Bruce Brown? Can he keep up the big minutes? Can Cam Thomas keep up the high usage, especially with Seth Curry around? How does his role look and what do his minutes look like on this new new look Nets team? The Mavericks and the Pelicans. Maxi Kleber was excellent last time that we saw him play with huge amount of blocks. We don't know if Reggie Bullock is going to play. He's listed as questionable for this game. Uh, as is Frank Nilakina and Trey Burke, while Marquise Chris is out. So there are big minutes available for Kleber. And he is absolutely going to be worth a stream on this day. Is he worth a must-roster spot? No. 
but there is value in him, especially while other players are out. And then we want to watch Jalen Brunson, who has played 37, 39, and 39 minutes in the last three games. It's a lot. And especially playing 39 with Dinwiddie around. Will we continue to get high minutes from Brunson or will the presence of Dinwiddie push him back? I don't think it will because he's significantly better than Dinwiddie, but that is worth watching because that was just Dinwiddie's first game on Tuesday. So how that plays out is very intriguing. But the Pelicans, the evidence is very clear that Devontae Graham and CJ McCollum should not play together that much at all. That means that you're playing more Jackson Hayes, and we saw that in the last game. Will Willie Green bite the bullet, or will he do it one more time before the break and then make the decision afterwards? I don't know how much it actually matters if Hayes still plays 29 minutes, but that's what we want to watch. And we also want to watch the black hole, CJ McCollum, how many shots he steals away from Brandon Ingram, how much he just dominates every time he's out on the court. It's great if you have CJ McCollum for fantasy. It's terrible if you're, a, I think, fan of the Pelicans or have anyone else on your team. And it's hurting all these guys because of CJ's um, gravity-centric performance. So let's watch if there's any change in that or if he's just going to try and do everything for this team, because that's what's been happening so far. Football's over. That's cool. Basketball's going, though. We're flying straight ahead, and BetOnline is the number one spot for all the odds, totals, player performance props. Go to BetOnline.net. It gets all of your sports betting needs. BetOnline remains the best spot for all of your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. It's not just basketball. BetOnline.net is the source for hockey, boxing, and UFC odds right next to Olympic coverage and information. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. Bet online is where the game starts. Let's start by looking at this game. Well, let's not start. Let's continue. It is the Sixers and the Bucks, and Jim Harden won't be available for Philadelphia. What we do want to watch is Shake Milton. It's somewhat gone under the radar, but since returning, Milton's played 25, 20, and 27 minutes. It's a lot. And yes... Harden arriving will have a significant impact on that. But is Milton worth streaming on Thursday if he's going to get 25 minutes while Danny Green flounders and Thibault can't do anything offensively? There's a possibility. And if Maxi still struggles, just watch what Milton can do. While for deeper leagues, Paul Reed is the backup center ahead of Paul Millsap. I don't know whether that'll be a long-term thing, but he's played 13, 15, and 15 minutes the last three games. And in deeper leagues, you know you want to pay attention when Paul Reed's getting regular minutes. For the Bucks. We don't know whether Grayson Allen or George Hill or Wes Matthews are going to play. They've all, you know, Allen had to leave last game early. Hill's missed weeks and Matthews missed the last game on Tuesday. If all those guys are out, that's a lot of wing players. And we know Pat Connaughton's already out. Then Jordan Wara is going to have to step into a larger role. And that could actually end up being pretty useful. They also just signed DeAndre Bembry. So he might be pushed straight into a role as well if those players are out. And then we also want to watch Bobby Portis, whose last two games have been really bad. Do not drop him. Keep an eye on your waiver wire, though, if someone does drop him in your league and go and add him. Serge Ibaka is not, I don't think, a threat to his role at all. It's just been some really bad shooting nights for Bob Portis. And that's where you can take advantage because a new player comes in and the player who some might think is affected by it starts to shoot poorly. Yet those two things tie in together and people start to panic. So pay a little bit of attention to that, I think. The last game before the All-Star break, it's the Rockets and the Clippers. Let's watch Jalen Green, who has done nothing to suggest to me that he is a 12-team league player. That may change, and it might actually change really quickly because Kevin Porter and Christian Wood are both listed as questionable for Wednesday, so there's a chance they miss both Wednesday and Thursday with illnesses. That's possible. And that might fire Jalen Green up. It might also amazingly fire Dennis Schroeder up, who's also listed as questionable for Wednesday with Achilles soreness. But I want to see just a glimpse, a flickering from Jalen Green that makes me think, yeah, yeah, I probably want to deal with him in a 12-team league because at this point, I don't. KJ Martin, another guy who we like what he can do, but it's going to require them marginalizing the wild thing, Jay Sean Tate. Even the wild thing's gone well. I can't do much about that. Against Utah, when they got their ass kicked, Tate played 22 and Martin played 26. I'd love to see that happen every game. I don't really believe that's going to happen. And it's just more of that mess with Martin and Tate and Shingun and Wood. But opportunities can arise because if Wood is out, Shingun starts at center, doesn't play any at the four. Don't know who the hell their backup center is, to be fair. Bruno Fernando. Um, and then you get some big minutes there available at center. Or KJ Martin can even play small ball center as well. So that's going to be something to watch if Christian Wood is actually sidelined. For the Clippers, we're always just watching the wings. Terrence Mann. Should we do it? Should we do it? Yes, we should. Sometimes it may be good. Sometimes it may be shit. Um, 
he was shit house last game, but he was brilliant the game before. Where does he fit? I think he'll get another start, but how do the minutes look with him and Coffey and Batum and Jackson and Morris and every other bloody bloke under the sun who's over there and uh, steals minutes? And then if it's a Zubats, who's getting a lot more minutes at the moment, it's really nullifying Hartenstein, who's not a 12-team league guy. We thought there was an opportunity, especially after he played 27 minutes in that game and then Zubats has come out and played 30. There's going to be nights where Hartenstein steps up, but you don't have to hold on to him. Zubats is probably a 12-team league player. He is a 12-team league player at this point. Again, I'm not super confident in him long-term as being a top 100 guy, but as a back-end player, he's putting up some pretty strong numbers um, at the moment. Back-to-back streams, this might seem silly considering it's the last game before the All-Star break, but there is a first game after the All-Star break to consider. And if you add someone for Thursday, look at which teams play on the following Thursday. And there's only one of them, and it's the Brooklyn Nets. So if you're going to stream anyone, it's Bruce Brown or Kessler Edwards or James Johnson or Andre Drummond or LaMarcus Aldridge or Cam Thomas or Blake Griffin or any of these players who are available for Nets, Nets guys, you get one ad and you get two games out of them. They are the only team who has that back-to-back, the Thursday-Thursday double. So they're the only team that you've got that ability to go and do that. But if you want the ability to save money on car parts, then rockauto.com is the place for you. Why would you go to a local chain auto parts store? That sounds disgusting. You've got to go and line up. You've got to go and be out and be condescended to, be spoken down to with intimidating questioning from a bloke behind the counter after you've waited in line. And then for the privilege of all that, you pay more money, get that garbage out of here. Go to rockauto.com. They're an online family business serving auto parts customers for 20 plus years. Whether it's brake parts or tail lamps, motor oil, or even new carpet, Rock Auto has everything that you would need for whatever car you have. So head to the website, check out the expansive range of parts for your car or truck, and in their How Did You Hear Us bo- How Did You Hear About Us box, write "Locked On" so that they know that we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. RockAuto.com. Um, and now I just realised I didn't hit the uh, the transition, but that's fine because we're here to talk about streams for Thursday. Nico Batum, Jackson Hayes. Really like the addition of Jackson Hayes here. Brucey Brown. And then it gets rough. Danny Green, PJ Tucker, Denny Avdia, Luke Kennard, Dwight Powell, Gabe Vincent, and Maxi Kleber. Like some of those guys I'd prioritize over others. They're probably Avdia, um, Kleber, probably Kennard, outside of the top three. If you go to deeper leagues, We've got a Barker, Georgie Niang, Kessler Edwards, Max Struess, KJ Martin, Sheikh Milton, Jose Alvarado, Omer Yetseven, Joshy Green, and James Johnson. And for points leagues, we're looking at Pat Mills, Nico Batum, Bruce Brown, Jackson Hayes, Alperin Shengun, Cam Thomas, Denny Avdia, PJ Tucker, Matisse Stiebel, and Dorian Finney Smith. And that will do it for me today, guys. Don't forget to follow this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on the Odyssey app. If you are here on YouTube, give us a thumbs up and leave your comments down below, guys. We are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.